the Vetus nucleus has returned. Over the past few months, we've learned a ton about some really in-depth mountain bike repairs. So it's time to take that knowledge and breathe some new life into this Vetus nucleus. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I'm gonna be doing is converting these Manitou Markar forks from 100 millimeters to 120 millimeters travel. Ever since I got these things, I knew that it could be done, but since I learned how to do it when I converted the Marzocchi, I figured now's a good time to do it and also service the lowers at the same time. I've easily put 100 or more hours on this fork since I got it, and it's well overdue for a servicing. The only problem is that I could not find some Manitou branded dust wipers, so I went ahead and bought some generic ones off Amazon, so I'm not really sure if it's gonna work, but I guess we'll find out once we pop these suckers off. So now that I have the lowers off, I went to compare the two dust wipers and they are just not even close. All I can do is clean these up. It does come with foam rings, so I'm gonna replace those. I'm just gonna bathe them in fluid right now. I'm gonna do something that's probably pretty stupid, but I'm gonna to have to take my chances. I'm gonna be removing this air cap, but I don't have the proper flat socket needed to do that. So I'm gonna take my chances and I'm gonna use this crescent wrench to hopefully loosen this up. And then I'm gonna loosen the bottom part of the air spring up with the crescent wrench also. I really hope I don't strip this out because then I can't use this bike this weekend. leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description below for all the products and tools that I've used in this video. And by clicking that link and shopping on Amazon, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you a thing and it helps support my channel. have a major issue when I was loosening the damper side lower and it ended up stripping out and rounding out the whole bolt. But I just took a nine millimeter Allen key and I took a hammer and I beat it in there and it allowed me to get some grip to tighten it down all the way, which I got lucky. That could have been a major disaster. With the forks, travel conversion and servicing done, now it's time to install the fork but I want to use the stem off the Matik. I really like it. I'm just gonna borrow the stem from the Matik just for this race. I promise I'll put it back on. These are the Shimano MT-401 brakes that came stock with the Vetus Mythic. If you guys can remember, Chain Reaction sent the bike with the brake orientation backwards. Chain Reaction offered to pay for it to be fixed, but I bought my own bleed kit. It looks easy enough and looks kind of fun too. I reached out to Box to warranty my two Box 2 shifters that have gone bad. Not only did they send me two new shifters, they gave me an upgrade to the Box 1. Their warranty process is super quick and they had these shifters to me in my hands within two days of starting the warranty claim. One thing that they told me is that they've discontinued their 11 speed group sets and instead want to focus on the nine speed group sets. So if you've had the same problems as me with the Box shifters, reach out to them now because their supply won't last forever.
My dropper post cable got frayed pretty bad at the lever. I ordered a replacement cable, but I literally cannot find it anywhere in this garage. Luckily, shifters use the same cable as dropper posts. So I just salvaged the cable off the box two shifter that I just took off. And luckily it was just long enough by just a few inches. I know I was pretty critical of the budget nuke-proof tire inserts, but I've had a set of 29 inch inserts lying around for a couple months now. One of my earliest subscribers, S14 Tat, left a comment and said that tire inserts are essential for hardtails. So I will definitely take that advice and put a tire insert in the rear. My brother bought me this Vittoria Barzo race tire and this build is for a race, so why not utilize that? I should have a little bit of protection from the tire insert, right? I know, I know what you're thinking. I do have a history of running light tires, having them fail and then complaining about it. But just understand that I am making content and I'm reviewing products and discussing the positives and negatives. Plus I'm relatively new to mountain biking and I'm still trying to figure out products that work best for me. And that could take months or years. This bike is fully race ready now. There's only one thing left to do, and that's to go shred. Well, I'm back at the house, and it was definitely interesting to get back on a hardtail. I've just been so spoiled with the Mythic and all the high quality parts that I've been putting on that bike. It definitely took some getting used to, especially with the budget Manitou forks. They really don't have much progression to the shock. They just feel kind of flat and you can really tell it doesn't ramp up at all. Something that would help is if you could put in air tokens, but I don't think that's a feature on these forks. I didn't really notice much difference with the increased travel, but I did notice that my bars were much higher and I actually stopped in the middle of the ride and adjusted my bars multiple times. Times. The bike did climb very efficiently. I don't know how much faster, if at all, I would be on the Nucleus compared to the Mathik. I would like in the future to splurge a little bit and really get a high quality fork for this Nucleus. If you could give me some fork recommendations to make this Nucleus a hardcore hardtail, let me know in the comments down below so I can really see what the Nucleus is all about. And I will say that the Markor fork is very, very good as an entry level air fork. And I would still recommend it to anybody. I'm super close to hitting 3,000 subscribers, which is truly amazing. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.